Hello there, lovely folks of YouTube, Ren here. So I have another plant behind me, which is a very famous witchy plant. It is one of our baneful plants, meaning it is poisonous, poisonous. Um, but despite that, it's traditionally one of the old cottage garden favorites as well. Um, you may recognize this little guy behind me. Um, it is foxglove or um, digitalis. Digitalis, of course, is the genus name. Um, there are several species in the digitalis genus. The most common one is digitalis um, purpurea, which is what this one right here is behind me. That's the purple foxglove. Um, there are other species, of course, and there are even hybrids between some of these species. But typically when we're talking about foxglove, this is the species we're talking to, um, which is the digitalis purpurea. Um, and that's the one that I have, so that's the one I'm mostly going to refer to. So this plant is a biennial. If you don't know what that means, um, biennials live for two years. The first year, um, they're putting all their effort into growing roots for the most part. So they, they grow a rosette of leaves typically, and the big hefty root system underneath it. Um, the second year, you know, they'll of course go dormant over the winter, and then the second year, that rosette of leaves will send up a big flower spike, um, set a whole bunch of seed, and then die. And hopefully that seed will then continue on and create new plants that will then go through that same life cycle. Um, what this means is that if you want to have continuous foxglove in your garden, you have to let it set seed and just seed itself wherever it will. Um, that also means that it's not really a good candidate for pots unless you can somehow manage to catch that seed and then reseed the pots with the, with the foxglove seed. Um, I have found that my foxglove tends to kind of move around my garden. It will find a place it likes better and it will move there. Mine used to be further back under the elder, but as the elder got bigger it sort of moved its way out because that's where it liked itself. So um, you kind of gotta, gotta give it a little bit of free reign in your garden if you really want it to um, be successful. Um, this does grow in zones 4 to 10. Um, any kind of sun condition really, but in the hotter zones it does better with some shade. Um, very easy to grow from seed. Uh, you literally just throw the seed out in either the summer or the fall and it will then come up in the spring. You don't want to actually cover the seed, it does need light to germinate, but um, very easy to grow and like I said I just let mine reseed itself um, and it does all the work for me. So um, let me give you a little close-up on what this plant looks like. Um, and we'll talk about uh, some of its nature. So here's a close-up of um, that one flower stalk that was behind me. You can see it is rather tall. Uh, it has very distinctive tubular flowers. Um, these flowers are very attractive to bees, particularly bumblebees, who will just crawl right up inside them for the pollen. Um, although it's poisonous to us, it is not to bees. Um, it has sort of a fuzzy leaf to it with very distinctive veining on it. And you can see down here at the base, these are two of the little baby plants that have sprung up here. So these plants will just set up this little rosette of leaves for the first year, and then in the second year is when it grows up really tall like this. Um, this plant can get up to about five to six feet tall when it's in full bloom, so you want to give it some space, ideally someplace in the back of the garden bed where it can kind of have the, uh, the free will to do what it wants to do, you know. This is um, a little wilder natured in its plant. Um, you know, this is one you got to be careful with. It is poisonous, of course. The um, medication digitalis is derived from this plant, hence the name. Um, it is a medication that they use for the treatment of heart failure. It is also highly toxic and has to be very carefully dosed. Um, as someone who works in the medical field, I know for a fact that I had a whole bunch of questions about digitalis toxicity that I had to do in preparation for my boards. So um, yeah, it's something we're very careful with, in, even in the medical field, and do not recommend messing around with this plant if you are not trained and yeah, you just don't know what this plant is going to do to you. Um, but it is lovely. It can, like obviously I'm touching it here with my hands. Um, it can poison you if you have, uh, handle it excessively, but generally just, you know, careful touching of the plant is usually not terribly harmful. Wash your hands afterwards, of course. Don't eat any food right after you've handled a bunch of foxglove. 
So anyway, let's uh, let's go back and we'll talk about some of the magical properties and folklore of this plant. So one of the old sayings about this plant, which I absolutely love, is that it has the power to raise the dead and to kill the living. <laughs> That is this plant in a nutshell. What's interesting about that expression too, the power to raise the dead, it implies of course some um, powers of being able to commune with the underworld, which is fitting for a baneful plant. Um, I also think that's interesting because it is a biennial and if you've read Harold Roth's The, the Witching Herbs, which if you haven't, you really should. I mean, I, haven't I gushed about that book enough? But. Um, he likens the biennial plants to underworld travelers, where basically they spend that first year sort of like growing and soaking up the sun, and then that winter they travel down to the underworld, um, sort of get transformed and then come back up again the next spring in a new form. It's a really interesting um, sort of concept behind it, but um, so yeah, underworld travel, um, communing with the dead. Those are some of the interesting properties that could be um, attributed to this plant. Um, however, most commonly, this plant is associated with the fae, just like the elder that I have behind it. Those two are planted by each other and it is no coincidence. Um, one of the common names of this is folk's glove, um, which, or fairy fingers, because of course the, the little bells are said to look like the little tips of um, the fingers of gloves. Um, that uh, could possibly be worn by the Fae. Um, it's also, some of the folklore says that the little spots that you see inside the flowers uh, come about anywhere that one of the, the Fae has touched the inside of the plant, um, and that if you see one without spots it's because you don't have any Fae or fairies in your garden. Um, one of the things that I think that's interesting about this plant is that it really does have that sort of capricious nature. It looks so cute and charming and lovely and like you just want to pick it up and smell it and put your face in it because it looks like it would just smell heavenly and it's super poisonous. Um, so that uh, there's that little twist of the knife there and that you know it looks really really pretty and it's actually really really dangerous and I think that's a very good analogy to uh, how some of the fae can be. So yeah, I can definitely see its relationship to those good folk um, in that nature. So how would I use this plant? Well, basically how I use it now, which is I put it in my garden, I use it to attract um, some beneficial spirits who maybe might bring some good into my garden. And other than that, I leave it alone and I let it do whatever the fuck it wants to do because I'm not messing with it. It is a gorgeous plant. I love to look at it. I'm not picking it, I'm not smelling it, I'm not touching it any time that I have, that I can avoid it. Um, I just enjoy its presence and that's really the safest way to um, have this plant. It's a lovely plant to have in your garden, but um, give it some space and let it do what it needs to do. Alright, <laughs> that's uh, all I have on this plant. Beautiful plant, dangerous plant, but sometimes the dangerous ones are the ones that are really worth growing. I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you again soon.